In this video, we review the ideal gas equation of state. In prior videos, we have seen how the physical state of a sample has to be described by specifying the state of matter that the sample is in, and then pressure, volume, temperature, and amount. Uh, and then we also have said that those four variables, okay, so pressure, volume, temperature, and amount, which we're going to express here using number of moles, those are related such that if you know three of those, then the fourth is uniquely defined. And this is entirely universally true. Uh, this happens uh, uh, for gases, for solids, for liquids, for any substance. Okay, another way to write this is that uh, those four variables cannot be fully independent. Okay, so uh, that's what this means. But again, in other words, that means that if you know three of them, then the fourth is known. All right, so what we do in this video is we apply this to a gas, uh, which is going to be an ideal gas, and then find, figure out what the relationship between those four variables is for that gas. Now, uh, again, this is going to be an ideal gas, and there's a couple of conditions that uh, need to apply in order for us to be able to call this an ideal gas. First, is that uh, when you think about that gas, Okay, there's going to be uh, various uh, particles of that gas inside that container. Okay, so the conditions are that there's no uh, type of interaction between any uh, of those particles, right? So there's neither attractions nor repulsions. And the second one is that the distance between uh, two particles uh, is so large that the size of the particles is negligible compared to the distance between those two particles. Okay, so it turns out that those conditions are kind of related because uh, attractions and repulsions between particles, uh, they take place when the particles are close. But what we're saying here is that the pressure of this gas is low enough that then, uh, on average, the particles are really far apart from each other. And that means that they do not really see each other, they cannot interact with each other, okay? Uh, and then another, uh, uh, a thing that happens here is that if the particles are really far apart from each other, then the size of the particles is going to be negligible compared to the overall volume uh, that those particles are occupying. All right, so those are the conditions for an ideal gas. And then if you have those conditions, the equation of state is very trivial. It's something that we have studied in general chemistry, right? Uh, the equation of state looks like this, all right? Those four variables, pressure, volume, amount, and temperature, are related uh, in this fashion. And there's this one more uh, element to this equation, which is this R, that is the gas constant. It's just a proportionality constant between the product of pressure and volume and amount and temperature. And this can have a couple of uh, values, right? Uh, in SA units, that is 8.314 in joules per mole Kelvin. And then uh, in a different set of units, which might be convenient to use in uh, uh, some problems, this value is 0 0.08206 atmosphere liter over mole Kelvin. All right, so which one of these two values of R you use depends on the units for the rest of the variables. Okay, so. Uh, uh, and, uh, number of moles and temperature always have to have the same units regardless of, of the units of pressure and volume. This is always going to be moles and that is always going to be Kelvin. Okay. Now, uh, the choice of R is going to depend on the units of pressure and volume. If you want to use the upper uh, uh, value of R, this one, then that requires you to use S units. And remember that the S unit for pressure would be Pascal and volume would be cubic meter. Okay, so if you use Pascal cubic meter, then uh, your R will have that value. However, generally, uh, or in some problems, you might not have the pressure in Pascal and the volume in cubic meters. M more commonly, you might have the pressure in ATM, atmospheres, and the volume in liters. Well, if the pressure is in ATM and the volume is in liters, then the R that you can use is this, is this one. All right, so then what happens if you don't have uh, pressure and, and volume in those units? Well, you'll have to transform them, right? So suppose that you're provided uh, the pressure in bar, so maybe 1.0 bar is the pressure, and then the volume happens to be, oh, I don't know, 37 mils, all right? 
Well, so, uh, you know, this is neither atmosphere liter, neither pascal uh, or cubic meter, right? So you actually get to choose uh, in which one of those set of units you transform uh, these input values, okay? So again, that's, that's a choice that you have. But of course, you will always get the same answer regardless of which route you go, okay? So again, you get to choose, but you have to do this wisely. All right, so what type of problems, uh, or what is this equation used for? Uh, uh, well, uh, what type of problems are you going to uh, encounter here? Well, the, uh, some of the uh, main problems that we will encounter here are called initial state, final state. Okay, and what that means is that, well, we're initially going to have one gas like this, and then we're going to just yes, subject this gas to a series of transformations. So, for example, one of the things that we could do is say, well, I'm going to get that gas, and then I'm going to here apply a large pressure. All right, so uh, there you go. So now that gas is much more compressed. Okay, and maybe uh, uh, the gas is enclosed in this container, so that means that the number of moles doesn't change, and you're doing this isothermally, right? So the temperature doesn't change either. Right, so, so the, what this equation allows you to do is to relate the initial state, where you have an uh, initial pressure, which is V1, and initial volume, which is V1, and then number of moles and temperature, to a final pressure, P2, which will be in this case higher, okay, final volume, V2, and then since the number of moles are not changing, you have N, and this is doing, uh, you're doing this isothermally, then the temperature doesn't change, then you have this temperature being the same. Right, so well, what happens here is that to solve those problems, you simply have to look at how the equation looks in the initial state, the final state, and then put both of them together. All right, so initially, notice that your equation will be P1, V1 is equal to nRT, and then at the end, you'll have P2, V2 is equal to nRT, right, because the moles and the temperature don't change, and then uh, the gas constant is a constant. So what that means is that P1 multiplied by V1 is equal to P2 multiplied by V2. Okay, so, so this is useful because what you learn here is that if you double the pressure uh, and then maintain comes the number of moles and the temperature, then the volume should decrease by a factor of two. Okay, so, so uh, that's the type of problem that we call initial state, final state. Those are things that you can actually uh, uh, learn when you use the idea of gas equation of state. Now, uh, there's many other ways or many other problems that you can face here. And uh, for example, one of the things that you could do is say, well, I'm, could do, I'm going to do exactly the same problem, but then I'm going to also change the temperature, right? So uh, here you will have your T1, here you will have your T2, T1, T2. So maybe you're cooling or you're heating that gas at the same time as you're applying pressure to it. Right, so then what will happen here is then the only variable that you have in that particular case would be uh, n, uh, or the only uh, constant that you will have would be n, n doesn't change, you're not adding any moles uh, or, or, or removing any moles, and r is constant. So then what you will have here is that p1, v1 over t1, this is equal to nr, then that is going to be identical to p2, v2 over t2 at the end of the problem. Okay, so if you have, say, five of these uh, variables, then you will know what the other one is in this particular transformation. Okay, so uh, this is how the equation of state looks like for an ideal gas. It's a very simple equation of state. Okay, so we go from a really general concept, which is the equation of state, to an application, which is fairly simple, that is your ideal gas equation of state. And again, this works uh, actually reasonably well. It turns out that under ambient conditions, when you have pressures that are close to one atmosphere of pressure, and then temperatures that are normal, like uh, 288 Kelvin or so, it turns out that this uh, uh, ideal gas equation state works really well. So the gases that are in this room, or you're breathing in, uh, the pressure is low enough that actually the interactions between those gas particles are negligible and then uh, uh, those particles, the size of the particle is really small compared to the size uh, or the volume in which they're moving, and that means that this, this uh, equation state actually applies, so you can actually use it for gases under ambient conditions. In the next video, we're going to see a breakdown to this ideal gas equation of state, so the question that we're going to be as asking is, 
Well, what happens when you uh, have that there's deviations from ideality, that this ideal gas equation state does not apply.